am uh, good captain uh, murthy <coughs> i joined air force in 1988 i'm an engineer basically so i joined in the aeronautical uh, engineers branch i was right from the beginning uh, fascinated with fighters and i should say after my initial training i was lucky enough to be posted to a fighter squad which is a mig 21 uh, squad it was it used to be called as first supersonics that was a great experience and uh, being with fighters and interacting with a uh, lot of uh, senior people my fascination grew for uh, flight testing flight testing uh, as an outsider when i uh, saw the testers the guys who fly not one type but various types of airplanes at one time it was it used to look amazing so i my interest in uh, So I got into that uh, flight testing. Uh, joined the AST. Then in AST, uh, I had the opportunity to fly many, many types of airplanes, not just one. Almost uh, 20 plus uh, types of airplanes. Uh, and that is the reason. While in Air Force also, like I had an opportunity uh, to come to HR on reputation and work on prototype. Uh, program which is the IJT program that kindled my interest in flight testing for the more that's the reason i chose to uh, uh, leave air force prematurely and join hcl to continue in uh, flight testing uh, only and still going on can you give us more information about hcd 40 uh, yeah you see uh, i joined hcl in 2012 and htt program started in 2013 so it was uh, a very good thing for me because i could see the project right from its inception uh, while it is on the uh, drawing board and then within no time it came on to the flight line 2016 we had the uh, first flight of the city of and uh, i would say the uh, flight testing uh, progressed uh, really rapidly And within five to six years, uh, we got to the stage of uh, certification. But talking about HTT for me, because because I was involved right from the beginning, it's obviously pretty close to my heart. It's a basic train. Now, if you look, not many companies make basic trains. Mm-hmm. Uh, very few companies are there which make basic trains. Though it is considered as low tech, but making a basic trainer is not easy. because that aircraft will be flown by pilots who have means who have not flown ever they are actually training for the first time to fly so the aircraft has to have such flying qualities it has to be calm composed and uh, forgive for any mistake any misapplication of controls that the rookie rookie uh, pilot uh, may do the aircraft should be uh, forgiven to achieve that in an aircraft without any uh, electronic actuators is a big challenge like uh, say in uh, nca we have flyover control so whatever intention the pilot has in terms of the control input that he gives the aircraft computer executes it by reflecting the control surfaces uh, in that manner But in a HTT 40, it is all uh, linked. The stick is linked to the control surface. So, for to achieve that, the correct amount of force, the correct amount of feel, to translate the intention of the pilot into the execution by the aircraft, is challenging for normal flying, and it is even more challenging for out of control flying. Out of control flying, I mean stalls, spins. where the aircraft is not flying in control but still the pilot intention of recovering the aircraft from that condition the aircraft should be able to execute it consistently and predictably so these aspects were uh, very challenging and uh, we could achieve it to a very uh, high degree of uh, consistency that is very satisfying Can you tell us the difference between 
Mark 1 and Mark 1 Plus. Are you talking about the uh, LCA? Yes. Yeah, yeah LCA uh, FOC aircraft is what is called as Mark 1, yes. which is already uh, inducted into the service and its few uh, squadrons are already uh, flying the aircraft. Uh, LCA being the first attempt by India, I would say, uh, had its own uh, share of problems, uh, limitations, uh, which uh, became known at a, at a early stage, I would say, like just with a couple of uh, squadrons in operation. So there was a need to, uh, if you want to go for more LCS, definitely there was a need to upgrade the aircraft to make it uh, more capable and uh, to provide uh, mm, more operational availability. Mm -hmm. So in order to add more capability and teeth to the aircraft, what uh, Mark 1A envisages is uh, it will have a SR uh, uh, So it is an electronically uh, scanned uh, radar. Then uh, it will be equipped with uh, electronic uh, warfare uh, system and also it would have uh, new uh, beyond the visual range weapons. These are the major changes but Mark 1A has many more improvements like dozens and dozens of improvements over the Mark 1 both in terms of uh, the maintainability of the aircraft uh, uh, as well as uh, to solve the issues of obsolescence and uh, make the uh, systems more current mm. the times. So Mark 1A will be a more contemporary aircraft. Though it is in the same shell, it will be a contemporary aircraft in terms of all its systems and capabilities. Can we look forward to the HTT-40 being inducted into the forces soon? <laughs> uh, you see, when HTT-40 project started, there was a tremendous amount of uh, resistance uh, from the Air Force, which is uh, actually uh, which is supposed to be the customer for the uh, Party. Because uh, that time Air Force was already inducting uh, PC-7, uh, which is a more uh, refined uh, product. And there was a lot of uncertainty uh, linked to HTT, whether it will fructify or not, and what form it will fructify, all these doubts were there. So there was uh, a lot of resistance and then uh, I would say the it's, it's actually a kind of uh, a landmark uh, as far as uh, decision making in HAL is concerned. For the first time HAL decided that okay even if customer is resisting that product we will still go ahead with the development. Let's have the product first and then let's see how it turns out. So it was internally funded. And then uh, uh, it was made. After the aircraft started flying, now you know world comes to as to how the aircraft is uh, doing. Doing good, bad. And uh, within uh, three years of the flight, first flight, we got into the spin mode and we could uh, do uh, six turns of spin successfully to left side as well as towards uh, right side. Then all that resistance melted away, I should say, and uh, the uh, aircraft was seen uh, in a more uh, favorable light. And we have AST across the uh, runway, the uh, Air Force test pilots. They came, in, they came and flew the HTT-40. And uh, they found the aircraft to be good. They, of course, they gave uh, many uh, Improvement suggestions for improvement mm -hmm. that and those are those are being addressed as on date the who and who of Air Force has uh, flown the H D T including uh, the present chief uh, Chaudhary sir and uh, the previous chief Arulya uh, sir even during this Aero India C N C flew and they all have good words for the H D T as far as the uh, stage of uh, induction is concerned, it is at a very advanced stage. Uh, the uh, cost negotiations, all those things have been completed. Uh, the draft contract is in uh, place. Uh, it is only uh, signature on the dotted line. But I must say one more thing. 
we have committed to Air Force that uh, we will uh, demonstrate inverted spin also, inverted spin and recovery on this aircraft. That uh, kind of testing uh, I think is being done uh, uh, for the first time after many many decades. Okay, in our generation, I don't think anyone has uh, done inverted spin test. We are currently doing that. Maybe by this month end or uh, March, sometime in March, we will be uh, completing the uh, phase of inverted spin. And then we would fully comply with the Air Force's requirement. And we expect that uh, before uh, 31st of March, the contract will be in place. Will the weapons used on the LCM Mark 1A, will it be made indigenously or will it be capable of operating weapons made out of India? Yeah, this is a very good question. You see, when we are talking about uh, operational uh, capability, we cannot have uh, platforms and uh, weapons uh, systems which have encumbrances outside the country. Because uh, under those uh, situations, how the support would be, whether it would be available or not, uh, there will be a big question mark on that. So, both in terms of platforms and in terms of weapons, we have to be indigenous. Mark 1A will have indigenous weapons. We will be integrating uh, Astra. Uh, Everywhere uh, beside on that, and uh, that's a great uh, leap forward. Uh, <coughs> so, definitely yes, it will be. Uh, uh, it will have a lot of indigenous content for weapons also. The advantage of making a own platform is that you have all the flexibility to give it the capability that you want to give it. Because uh, the uh, mission computer will be yours. The software engineers, our software engineers are writing the code for that. So whatever weapon we want to integrate, we always will have the option and flexibility to do that. So indigenous weapons will be the, uh, the thing of uh, coming days. Uh, will the Mark 1A take to the sky maybe sooner than just Mark 1? Is there a possibility? Yeah, Mark 1 is already flying. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, making 40 in number. Mm -hmm. And immediately after completion of uh, that production, the Mark 1A production will commence. Okay. Right? Uh, the commitment made by HAL is uh, that we will provide uh, the Mark 1A mm -hmm. by February 24. Okay. The aircraft have already been modified. Two aircraft have already been modified mm -hmm. to Mark 1A status. Mm -hmm. uh, they are now flying with the modified, uh, not the modified, the new radar, the new SR radar and uh, the EW, mm -hmm. the electronic warfare quad. Uh, so testing is already underway. Okay. And we hope we have about one year's time, which is right. Uh, but within this one year, our commitment is that we will finish the uh, flight testing and Mark 1A will get inducted into Air Force mm -hmm. by February 2024. Thank you so much and for being a part of the ADU chat room. Uh, we hope to see everything that you spoke about in the very near future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.